Hey folks, today I've got the brand new Garmin Instinct Crossover. Now this watch has got hands, but it's got more than just hands. It's actually got a number of other changes internally that are super interesting, and some of them are really important. Now the Instinct Crossover is basically based on the Garmin Instinct 2 series. This one you see over here on the left. Now in the middle here, I have the Garmin Instinct Crossover Solar. That's the one that, well, has solar panels on it so you can charge it for theoretically forever um, or basically run it forever. And on the right hand side, I've got the base edition here without the solar panels. Now in this review, I'm gonna walk through all the newness on the watch first, and then I'm gonna show you the hands and how they work because it's really, really fascinating. That's one of those things that's like geeky kind of cool. Then from there, I'll talk about sport modes and widgets and eventually GPS accuracy and heart rate accuracy and finally all that kind of recommendations and thoughts on where this all fits in. Now the very first thing to know is the price. The price of the Instinct Crossover, the base model, this one right here, is $499. The Instinct Crossover Solar is $549. And then there's also a tactical edition that's above that, that's $599. This is more pricey than the Instinct 2 and Instinct 2 Solar editions. Now let's just go straight into what's unique and different about this. Uh, the first one obviously is it has hands. You can see these hands right there. They're analog hands, they do move around uh, the watch as you would expect, but they also move out of the way. I'm gonna show you that in just a second here. The next thing you probably can't see right now because the lights are on is there is a glow coating basically this little dots all the way around here and this is on both units and now technically it's called super luminova it's actually like a branded thing uh it's something that other watch manufacturers use as well and it's what's shown here here's what it looks like at night just recording on my phone so nothing super fancy Basically, you charge this up just like any other glowing thing uh, with light. It could be like your phone flashlight, it could be sunlight, etc. And then it glows for, it seems like a couple hours at, you know, kind of a decaying intensity. Uh, it is not radioactive, by the way. It used to be. This technology, not this exact one, but very similar technologies used in other watches was radioactive. If you want to go down an entire fun internet rabbit hole, you can do that starting with Wikipedia, and then about five hours later, you'll probably be finished. Now, here's a still picture of what this looks like, which, by the way, came out way better than what my eyes actually see that like the phone camera is incredible sometimes but uh, this is a still picture of what this looks like at night uh two in the morning and then here's what it looks like when you turn the backlight on just so the backlight is still there it's super visible uh so that doesn't go away at all here okay and just a quick note if you're finding this video interesting or useful just simply whack that like button at the bottom there it really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. The next thing you might have noticed is the little circle is gone on these watches, right? This is the typical instinct circle seen up there, different data fields going there. Uh, now it's basically just a square. Uh, it's kind of behind the screen. You can kind of see as I tip this way and that way. So that gives you actually more kind of real estate to work with uh, from a display standpoint, but some people would have liked that uh, from like a stylistic standpoint to each their own. The next change you probably didn't notice in this upper camera, but once I tilt it, you will, uh, is that the glass is a little bit higher up now. So. Uh, uh, on the Instinct 2 series, the glass, basically the screen was down further, like down in a, in a bit of a, I don't know what you call it, like it was just down further. Uh, and then here it's raised up a little bit more. Uh, it's still well protected with this bezel around it, uh, but I just think the higher up glass looks nicer, it feels nicer. They've gotten rid of this fabric grabbing material that was like on the Instinct 2 right there. Uh, and just a much cleaner look across the board here. So the next item is a bit of a big one, but it's not one that you probably would have noticed at first, uh, which is that they've changed the GPS chipset inside of this. It's now the same chipset they're using on the Phoenix 7 series, the Epics, etc. cetera. Uh, it's not the Sony chipset in the past, but it's also not multi-band. It's like the next best thing. And in some cases it's beating multi-band watches from other companies. Now, following that, as I mentioned earlier, Garmin Pay is on all of the the uh, Instinct Crossover Series. So you have that there if your bank supports that. Uh, and then last but not least, they've changed the battery specs a bit. In some cases, the battery goes down slightly, but in other cases, it goes a lot higher. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that the battery specs from the Instinct 2 series to the Crossover series change in terms of the definition of the GPS modes. So with the Instinct 2 series, the GPS definition there was GPS plus GLONASS. But in the case of the Instinct Crossover, it's all systems, which means you have five different GNSS systems. So you've got way better accuracy, even if some of those numbers are going down a little bit. However, other numbers, for example, the long longer battery life modes go way up because that chipset is just simply more efficient. So with that, let me just show you all the cool stuff on this watch, starting with the hands. Uh, so watch this, as I go down right there, uh, you'll see that it changes the hand position. So back up to the watch face, it's showing the current time. It is currently blocking my uh, intensity minutes or calories over the left hand side, but I haven't found that that big a deal. I think for the first couple of hours I was wearing it, I was like, yeah, I'm not so sure about this. But after like, again, in like two minutes, I can see that, or I can just simply tap down and I can go see that same information in the widgets. And you'll see the hands are always like sweeping to get out of the way, but it varies depending on which thing you're in. Uh, so for example, if I go down here to weather, I tap this open, watch this. 
Uh, now, it's still horizontal, but as I go down again, as I look at the weather for the next few hours, it goes vertical. Kind of cool, right? And then if I go down again, still vertical, and then now here's the 12-hour trend into horizontal. Now, I go back here to the widgets, and we'll go down to find my steps. It's still early in the morning, so there we go. I'll tap this, and this becomes a gauge that goes around. If you look at a little bit of a video or picture or something from yesterday, you can see here at the end of the day, it goes towards the right-hand side because it's using those hands as a gauge on this entire kind of progress bar around the screen. In fact, the same is true in workout mode. If you're using it as a heart rate gauge, it'll actually show you as a little gauger. Uh, and as you can see, it's virtually instant. I mean, it's basically like one second to go ahead and move wherever it needs to. Now, you may be wondering what happens if these get out of alignment. And don't worry, there's actually a solution for that too. We go into the settings menu right here. We go all the way down to hands. We'll find it eventually down here. System and hands. Uh, and there's a misstep calibration and there's set alignment. So set alignment, you can go ahead and uh, basically do the calibration of the hands. It does this little loop-de-loop -loop, and you can manually do this if you need to, to fix it all up. Or if we went back to this misstep calibration right there, uh, this is something that Garmin has actually named from a marketing standpoint. It's called Revo Drive, which sounds like a blend between something I would put like to clean my toilets out and like some sort of car oil or something. I don't really know, but uh, basically what it does is it automatically does a whole swirly thing if it gets a hard impact. Uh, and you can see there's two options here, general use and during activity. And it basically takes one second to do this little like loop-de-loop -loop right there. Uh, and it just does it on the fly. So if I do a calibrate right now, you can see that little loop and done. That's as simple as it is. And Garmin says it'll happen behind the scenes if it gets a hard impact. Now, this seemed like something I'd wanted to test. So I've been whacking the crap out of this watch with all sorts of things that don't like break the glass, though I've come probably pretty close. I've been like using kitchen spatulas, a soup ladle, all sorts of stuff to like try to make an impact on this that'll trigger that calibration. And I haven't been able to yet. And so I fully believe that Garmin does this behind the scenes with the right impact. But given how hard I've been hitting this watch and not triggering that impact, if you get hit by that impact, the watch hands are the least of your issues. You should be checking whether or not you even have a hand anymore. Now, I'm not sure it needed like a cool marketing code name, though I do appreciate that Revo Drive is something that uh, is there if I guess I need it. Now, beyond this, in terms of basic usage, it's the same as an Instinct 2 series. So if we just go back right here, uh, these are all the widget glances. You can go into them as before. Uh, so again, heart rate and you know sleep, for example. I didn't, didn't sleep very much last night. If I go down here to my training status, for example, I can crack that open. I'll see my uh, training status there, my HRV status. It does have full HRV status because that's something that came to the Instinct 2 series uh, this past summer. Do keep in mind, it will take 19 nights of sleeping before you get your HRV status trends but you will see the individual night HRV details uh, basically as soon as you sleep. Uh, going on down, you can see my cute load, for example. I can crack that open right here. That's my load for the last seven days using kind of the new training status 2.0 features. And if I go down, I can see the exercise load and it'll show me sort of what types and categories that load fits into. I can also see my VO2 max in here. And again, there's my HRV status over the last seven days, uh, 50 milliseconds and recovery, about seven hours of recovery left since my last workout until my next hard workout. Now again, everything here is the same as the Instinct 2 series with the exception of the fact that there's all these new features that Garmin has added since the Instinct 2 release this past February uh, until now. We've seen a ton of features, for example, come from the Garmin 400 255 and 955, and even from like the Phoenix 7 series. So there's more sport modes in here. All of like the windsurfing and surfing modes are all in here. And in fact, if I go to sport modes, I can crack this open by pressing this button right there and you can go down into the sport modes that I've added for this watch, but I can go down below here, keep on going, 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 click on add, and the whole point of each one of these sport modes uh, is one, to be able to customize the data for that sport mode. Uh, so for example, in cycling, you've got cycling power meter support versus emboldening the different metrics for that. Uh, winter ski sports like ski and snowboard, you get downhill metrics, uh, you know, max speed per run, automatic run calculation, et cetera. And there we go back to uh, golf, pickleball, et cetera. So uh, there is more sport modes here than there has been in the past. And the fact that those surfing and water sport modes are now built into this by default is pretty handy. So if I were to start a sport mode, I would just tap this upper right hand corner right there. Uh, you can see again, the arms are always moving out of the way. It's so much fun to watch that. It has no like technical benefit to me. It's just entertaining to watch to see like where they move and different things. Like, so if I click on run right there, I crack this open. Uh, here it's giving me a suggested run for the day. Uh, very, very short run because I didn't have much sleep last night. I'll just dismiss that for right now. Uh, these are the data pages I've set up. 
Now, keep in mind, because there is no little circle anymore, you can have up to four data pages, just normal, like a quadrants, if you will. Here's a picture of that right there with the four data pages there uh, using mapping. Here's the gauge page. No heart rate right now, obviously, because it's not on my wrist. Uh, and then going on down here, uh, there's a time. And of course, these are all customizable using the Garmin Connect app or on the watch itself. Uh, and you can add in Connect IQ data fields as well. If you want to follow course, middle left-hand button right there, go down to navigation, Oop, that's training, navigation, uh, and then you can add a course there. And then once I load that up, I'll go ahead and I can see the map right there of this particular course. Uh, you can see there's the map kind of moving around. Uh, if I press plus there, and I can change, I can move this over here like this, etc. cetera. Uh, now there is no maps on this, it's just a breadcrumb trail, uh, but it will give you turn by turn direction. So unlike some other map based watches that have been released recently, those don't have turn by turn directions, this will. So it'll tell you to turn left as you're upcoming onto a turn, and then it'll let you know if you're off course and so on. Uh, it doesn't have those maps underneath it. Now I don't wanna reiterate like every single Instinct 2 series feature. Again, my entire review is in the corner there, and also my entire Instinct 2 series beginner's guide because all that applies here as well and that beginner's guide is like 40 minutes long it takes you through every feature slowly but surely uh, and again it's all the same minus the fact that this has hands swinging around all over the place but the underlying software features are the same now before we dive into the gps chipset pieces let's talk about where that's different here so i'm gonna go back into the settings for this uh, i'm just going back 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 this is the settings for the run hold on to this there we go run settings uh, and this is available both on a per sport mode basis as well as uh, across the watch so i'm gonna go down here until i find the satellite options there we go satellites tap that and you'll see there's all systems that's different than something like the Instinct 2 because the chipset is different. So now this all systems has all the satellite systems you see on the bottom of the screen right now uh, versus the Instinct 2 does not have all those systems. It is not multi-band. So if I were to look at something like the 955 or even this 400 255 right there, this is actually cheaper than this by about 150 bucks. Uh, this does have multi-band and that is one weird gap here. I would have thought when Garmin released the 255 uh, this past summer, past June, that that would become like the baseline for multi-band GPS or dual frequency GPS, which is kind of considered like the holy grail of GPS accuracy. It's able to handle buildings and mountains and stuff like that a little bit better. Uh, I would have thought that'd be like the baseline for more expensive watches like this $550 one or the $600 tactical edition of this, but unfortunately it's not. The good news though is that that same chipset is here just minus the multi-band portion. So looking at that GPS accuracy, I decided to go straight into like the hardest test possible, which is the city building test with these 30 story buildings. And then I compared it in particular to the Instinct 2 series, as well as a bunch of other watches at this price point to see how the differences looked. Now in this first section here, the crossover is in green and the Instinct 2 Solar is in blue. And you can see the crossover easily beats the Instinct 2 Solar, just a lot cleaner and straighter line. Also note, I've linked to all these sets down below in the description so you can look at them yourself if you want to. Now as I traversed again across the city uh, you can see that the crossover had a little bit of issues on this second pass if you will. Uh, the 955-255 did better there but all the units kind of struggled on this pass uh, but then for the third pass uh, the Instinct 2 crossover was pretty good. In fact it actually ended up being the best. Uh, it made the final churn out of the downtown area the most correct out of all the watches uh, but even like the 255 and the 955 nailed the roadway up until that point very closely. And for the rest of the area's multiband GPS isn't as important, but even check this little area right there where I crossed the street. That yellow line is the exact crosswalk that I crossed. Uh, and you can see there the Coros Apex 2 went too early uh, along with the uh, Garmin Instinct 2 Solar. But this watch as well as the other Garmin multiband ones went directly on the crosswalk. Uh, like it was very, very good. Like kudos. And again, this is like minor nitpicking stuff but I think in general when you look at GPS accuracy uh, it's all about nitpicking things and the more things you get right the more accurate your tracks are the more accurate your data is and that's pretty useful to people like me. Now in the vein of doing things that are difficult from a GPS standpoint I went for an open water swim yesterday super super cold the water temperature is 13 degrees Celsius about 55 degrees Fahrenheit all without a wetsuit uh, and so out on that, I had on a swim buoy with me another GPS. That's basically my reference for that, so it stays above the water. Uh, and in the open water swim mode here, you can see very clearly that the GPS track was virtually identical to the reference uh, coming from the instant crossover. So kudos there. Next, just looking at some quick screenshots of like bike commuting around the city here. There's no comparative data here, but there isn't really a need for it. You just look where the bike path is. As long as I'm on the bike path, I'm where I should be. Uh, if it says I'm somewhere else, then it's not where I should be. And you can see that almost every scenario across the city are uh, riding along relatively fast. 
in a handful of scenarios that may be like one to two meters away from the bike path, but I mean, that's pretty darn good uh, given I'm moving pretty quickly in the city next to buildings. Looking at the heart rate side of things, I've been throwing interval workout after interval workout after interval workout at this. And as you can see from every one of these charts right down below there, it's spot on, which it makes sense. This is the same optical heart rate sensor on the back there that we've seen from the last 18 or so months worth of Garmin wearable devices. And it's no surprise that this lighter watch will handle pretty well. So where do we stand overall? Well, ultimately like most Instinct models, it's gonna come down to like style preferences. Some people will like the Instinct style or the Casio style, if you will. Others will just simply hate it. Uh, I find this is probably the best stylistic uh, look of the Instinct to date for all the reasons I mentioned earlier on. Uh, and while the hands took like, I would say one evening to get used to from a style standpoint, I kind of like it now. I'm not sure if I want to make this my like daily watch, but I do like this more than the other ones. Uh, and I think it just feels a little bit classier now, especially with this like little bit of a metal uh, polished look inset around the bezel there. I'm not sure if it's actually metal, but looks like it uh, on that kind of inner side there. It just looks, like I said, a little bit classier. Still, I do wish that Garmin had put a uh, multi-band GPS, given that it is on a watch that's 200 bucks cheaper uh, in these units, but I don't really care at the end of the day how they achieve accurate GPS as long as it's accurate. Uh, and in this case, it's clearly a step up over over the uh, Instinct 2 Solar Series, and it's equal, if not better, than their competitors' multi-band options. So I guess there's that for you, but still, like I would have thought at this point that'd be standard given what Garmer did earlier this year, but apparently not. So with that, hopefully you found this interesting or useful. Got plenty more sports technology stuff coming. The new watches, there's, there's more to come here, folks. So you do not want to miss out on that. So consider hitting that subscribe button at the bottom there, or hit like if you found this, again, helpful in some way, shape, or form. With that, have a good one.